hey what's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel today for another review by the graphics you already should know what we're about to get into but it is zero and i and officially on the record yes we are about to review the new film when evil lurks this film did make its theatrical release october 6th it is now available today as of october 27th on shutter this is a film that has done very well for itself on the film festival circuit it did premiere at toronto international film festival and then it hit fantastic fast and then it just went from there to there to there um basically hitting all the big festivals not even just horror specific but just all of the big film festivals and um from the folks that know that checked it out pretty early people were raving about it then the reviews came out people were high about it um zero got to see the new york premiere uh some time ago i finally got to see it some time after that uh, but nonetheless we are here to talk about a film that i'm just gonna go off the record and say that if you are looking to close spooky season correctly this is what you need to be doing this weekend period um, this film was very very brutal <laughs> <laughs> in a tasteful way had a good story a good arc within it uh, but the brutality unpredictable um it's just a lot of li different things i liked about the film but uh, we'll definitely get it all into it i do want to premise that while we are going to keep majority of this spoiler free there may be little sprinkles of spoilers or just very strong hints of things to come um that should not ruin your experience but in fact uh very objectively make you want to check this film out as it is once again available on shutter as of today october 27th so when you talk about the film when evil lurks what is this film about my friend this banger all right so it takes place in a remote village which we're assuming is argentina um that's the origin of the director um damian ruckna who we also just saw um had a short in satanic hispanics which we loved um but this one when evil lurks takes place again in a remote village two brothers find a demonic infested man who's in one way or another about to give birth to evil <laughs> um, and they decide to, you know, take it uh, into their own hands to get rid of the man to kind of save their their remote village. Um, but unfortunately, the only thing that they succeed in doing is spreading the madness and uh, chaos is afoot. Chaos is afoot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love I love how Pedro and Jimmy uh, took it upon their own uh, ambition to say, huh, this person's not good for the farmland. We're going to get them up out of here and only to discover. And like, I, I do love the awareness that not only do they know that there's like a demonic infection in, infection and that's like dangerous to anything within this proximity. So they say if we remove the person, then that fixes the problem. But I, I also just love like culturally across the board, how everybody's like, this is not good for anybody, not mm -hmm. just you, not just us at the land, but anybody that this is around, please remove this by any means and uh, the collectives especially between the brothers and other family members of saying we need to remove this uh i guess that's what drew me in because i'm thinking to myself like huh so everybody knows this is evil and y'all are now trying to figure out how you're going to handle it as the viewers you're like yeah how, how are you all going to handle this because at this point now um and I, I really do mean this in like the most like kindest in the most like empathetic way possible but like we all know because it does very good in ratings uh my 600 pound life this is like the demonic version of that <laughs> it, it, it's just what it is it, it's it, it's just what it is and then the fact that like they all collectively came together and was like so we can't actually touch this person problem but we have to remove this person also not so easy what are we going to do and i think i think like just the beginning of this film really intrigued me about what was to come and i want to say that the special effects the costume and makeup mm. design of this instantly out the gate was just eye grabbing where you're just like this looks disgusting it sounds disgusting it smells disgusting i know it's not a 40s <laughs> movie but like the descriptive <laughs> and everything you've seen visually 
it triggers these sensors in your body. Like throughout the film, there was so many different times where I'm like, I, I'm actually like getting like really disgusted out from the things mm-hmm. that I'm like tasting and thinking because of just how really depictive all of these things are. But like instantly off the gate, I um, mean, this is an original take on it, like a possession film. I, I thought that this really, really grabs your attention very quickly with this, with just the elements of how everything is kind of staged very early in the film. So mm-hmm. I guess for you, um, in a two-part question, what did you sort of think about, uh, and, and better yet, when did you connect with the film? And then overall, just how did you feel about like the progression of just the story itself? Mm-hmm. Well, like you, I was grabbed pretty quickly because... The only thing that I knew before I went into watching this movie is that we have some sort of possession, something having to do with something unhuman. That's all I know. And usually when it comes to these themes in horror, there's a lot of like victim complex. There's a lot of, um, you know, people who were wronged, people who were hurt by whatever entity, and then they have to spend, you know, at least a third of a movie trying to convince the public, trying to convince the town, trying to convince the police department that Mm -hmm. something otherworldly is actually happening. I know I sound crazy, but you just got to believe me. And that was the first thing that made me say, oh, wow, this is really different. Um, When we first um, see the, you know, the, I guess the source of evil for the rest of the movie is just this man who's completely bloated and swollen with evil um and his family is still taking care of him because honestly they just don't know what to do they know that this used to be somebody that i love this used to be somebody that was you know dear to me but shit we gotta get this under control um and i think that was pretty unique so when you jump into the film you already have a sense of you know awareness from the community um And what I also liked about that is once you get into the dialogue a little bit, you get to know the characters, you can assume some of their relationships with the other people in this very small rural town. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of it, you know, sometimes people just don't get along. But one thing we can all agree on (laughs) is the fact that we are, shit is about to hit the fan and we can put our differences aside, even though I don't really rock with you like that because... You know the the stakes are high and <laughs> everything can come crashing down very very quickly um so even though it's it's an emotional thing we are dealing with possession taking over loved ones um nobody really has the sense of you know i can i can fix them i can reach them um everyone is really on the same page is this is just a thing that happens and when it happens you have to know how to deal with it so what are we going to yeah. do And I thought that was really unique and also uh, kind of launched the story into this super fast progression that we see because there was no need for building any context. It we were there and now what are we going to do about it so we can just go on to the, the crazy stuff that you will witness later in the film. Agreed. And, you know, Talking about the things I liked about the film, like, you know, from the horror standpoint, it's brutal and it's very unpredictable with the brutality. Like things sort of happen in ways that even if you predict maybe one event, the follow up event, I'm sure you're not. And there's numerous times where I was like, oh, I see where this is going because we already know how this kind of works in in terms of possessions. You know, the Efron and find out meter slowly creeps up. But also there should also be some other bit of scaling in terms of when you hit certain points of the f round and find out meter the repercussions of the person who's observing the person that's having the f round and find out meter so i'm just gonna say like while everybody sort of tries to work through the situation there is a lot of warnings involved like you cannot just kill the evil just because you possess a gun it's just not going to work that easy And there's folks that saying, like, if you do that, then not only is it going to be bad for you, but it also is going to be bad for me. And you're kind of thinking, like, well, what does that actually mean? And then the movie clearly gives it to you on a plate and says, well, that's what that means, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But with that, like, the the, the sound mixing, because it's so chilling, there's so many different noises from, like, grunts and just 
just flesh at times. Mm -hmm. It just really, they really work the sound very, very good. I, I tell you, if you really want like a clear source of rap, like I felt that it's like the last five minutes of the film that it's just, as I mentioned, like you hear things and then it just sends off an array of triggers to, to your senses. Like you're looking at it, then you're, you're hearing it and then your taste, your taste starts going all crazy. And then it's just, it, it just really hits all of it. Cause I think the sound missing is just, it's just really just that good. That is creating a sense of like dread, but also like, atmospheric core from just totally. the sound alone so I, I thought they did a really 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 good job in that and the last thing i'll talk about in terms of the things i like was the performances now a lot of these folks uh, i think it's only but like one cast member i'm familiar with but a lot of these folks i'm not and i think that's always works to the benefit of viewers when you're watching a horror film because at times when you don't know somebody then you could kind of not assume who's off hands you know certain casting you're like oh they're they're good they're definitely going to make it mm -hmm. but when you don't know anybody you kind of across the board kind of attach these people are, are pretty much the same because it's the unpredictability of you don't know what's going to end up being the fate of these characters so with that you're just on edge the entire time so mm -hmm. i will say when it comes down to performances the lead in uh pedro by uh i think i believe i believe you pronounce his name ezekiel rodriguez uh I was with him the entire time to the points where he was confused, the points where he was trying to, you know, rescue his family, to the points where he was kind of like, well, that's done. I, I don't know what I'm going to do mm -hmm. here. And kind of put his head down in defeat, like, oh, well, I, I don't know what to do. But I really did get behind this character, Pedro. He had a front row seat to all the shenanigans. So I think he was a good actor um, and, a, and, a, and a very much a good vehicle for the viewers to really go and be in um the, uh, attached to the film and kind of be in the shenanigans with him i thought he did a good job yeah totally another thing that you know a horror cliche that always comes up it, within our genre within our fandom is characters making really stupid unbelievable mistakes unfortunately we got to be a little bit real with ourselves in fandom if characters don't make stupid mistakes then we don't have a movie so somebody has to mess up but there really is an art in making that believable you know we you know sitting in the audience can say oh girl don't open that door don't go in the attic don't go in the basement don't do it don't do it um but is there a reason why they actually would be drawn to do that and not just you know we need something to move this plot forward so that being said our lead is the the perfect vehicle to to charge this whole movie forward and also of course it's it's the writing as well um because every you know granted he is making a lot of stupid mistakes but it's believable and they're they're human mistakes um this situation y'all i can't even you're just gonna have to see for yourself but putting a regular degular average joe like you and i into a situation like this like we're, <laughs> we're bound and up and uh once you see this you you can really understand and that that takes away kind of like the divide between this is what's happening on the screen and i am an enjoyer of the story that's being told and really keep you in it because you're like it's believable it makes sense why he's making all these dumb mistakes and it's not just him either it's the whole cast um all right it's mostly our main character but with the support or quite the opposite actually with the mistakes of the supporting characters <laughs> they're all believable and they all add to the chaos yeah um and you know maybe there's a metaphor there i had to think about it a little bit more but um <laughs> it's maybe something about nature and how you really can't mess with it you can step your foot in and do your best and follow the strict set of rules you know if you don't want uh moldy strawberries in <laughs> the fridge you know there's things you can do to prevent that but in the end the mold is always going to get the strawberries. Um, yeah, good stuff. Great writing, great performances. Um, I don't speak Spanish. This is an Argentinian film, so it is in native tongue, Spanish. But that doesn't matter at all for the viewers. Yeah, good point. Uh, subtitles were not a struggle. Um, it also wasn't a distraction. And I, I also say that in a very tasteful way, because sometimes the dialogue could be so heavy in order for you to really understand what's happening in script. Or some, sometimes you can actually miss 
uh, some of the details was happening uh, visually. And I think that this one absolutely worked together. Um, I do agree while everything was kind of happening across the board, as we said, we kind of normalized the threat. Everybody was aware of what it was. That didn't stop these other family dynamics and issues to still being very present. So people were sort of dividing themselves between well, this is what happened. This is our issue every single day as a family, but also this is an imminent threat right now. I'm having a hard time figuring prioritizing what's happening. And you'll see it with Pedro. Pedro does make some hard decisions, shall I say. He also makes some decisions where I'm definitely like, oh, I guess you just don't care about that anymore. And he's on to the next. I mean, let's just call it what it is. People were dying and people showed no care about that. They were just like, whoops, <laughs> sus to be you type of thing. And at one point, I thought it was kind of silly, but then I thought about like, yeah, you put yourself in that situation. You don't really have time to respond to that when the threat is still right here. And mm -hmm. then ultimately, I'll just say that Pedro is trying to save and protect his son, uh, which you, it's established that there's not such a healthy relationship there, but a father is going to do what a father is going to do. Um, even if it is the time and the only time he ever gets a chance to do what he needs to do because the mom mm. definitely has some choice of words and the mom the, the, that's a, this is another thing I we could hint at a little bit while the mom prioritizing bombing the dad out there's some other things happening in another room that the mom just doesn't care about at the time yep. <laughs> just, just kind of like nah I'm, I'm, let me bomb Pedro out that can wait oops too late wow <laughs> uh, wow so, my 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 last little things I will say quickly is that um, this film is uh, very diverse because uh, if it ain't kids, if it ain't women, if it ain't animals, uh, everybody could get it, and yep. everybody can also dish it too. Because yes. evil, evil by all means <laughs> is not prejudice. <laughs> Whoever it wants, it will go get. So you will see it across the board that anybody can be possessed. And then mm -hmm. they can dish it out, and and for sure. And then the other thing, as I mentioned, the word I forgot to mention earlier is rotten. It's said a thousand times in the film, and the more and more you hear it, the more and more you think it, and that's what I thought really was a catalyst to like triggering the the, the sense of smell to things. Because you see it, you see the textures, things are gooey, things are icky across the board. And I think they did such a good job of the sound mixing that that just really sets off an array of different um senses that you may experience while watching mm -hmm. so like to, to, to sum that up this film is very stimulating very very yes stimulating. extremely i want to hop back on something you said very early in our review but almost that so you can taste it and i have to give my applause to just just the atmosphere in general one that's why it makes you know for those who are a little stingy about subtitles or maybe worried that, you know, they might miss something. Um, if the film is dialogue heavy, one, it's not very dialogue heavy. But even if it were, um, the the umbrella of the like atmosphere car just really carries this entire film all the way through. Um, so the atmosphere, uh, you know, is made up of this squishy fleshy sounds the, the the groaning and the moaning um even stuff like wind you know ripping through the forest in between trees the dialogue that's used in comparison with that so the way that they talk about the evil and the possession it's rotten it's you know it's no good it's you know um using all these words and also pairing them with these sounds that can trigger almost a taste. So, you know, when we see our characters keeling over, trying to figure out what they're going to do with this rotten, in a really weird and disgusting and unsettling way, you can almost taste, you can almost taste a rotten, you can almost taste the evil. But that's definitely a nod to just how atmosphere card just carries this all the way yeah. through and you will be disturbed you will be sick to your stomach i was telling najir i watched it at night the morning after and you know i'm one of those girls i watch a lot of movies i do watch a lot of movies but this was burned into my brain it was burned <laughs> into my ears it was burned into my taste buds it stays there it stays there because of the atmosphere and that's yeah. one of the reasons one of the many reasons why in my humble nerd opinion this is the hardest horror movie of 2023. Yep. And listen, people came out of the film festival saying that, and I said that is a high bar because there's been some really solid films this year. Yep. And I'll go on the record and say it's definitely within the top five. I need to kind of reevaluate the year. 
a little bit to, to see where I sit it, but it's, 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 it's super impressive. You certainly want to go out and watch. Um, also, uh, honorable mentions or just late additions to shout outs um, is that core kid nucleus, um, all of them, you know, whether they were just supporting characters, whether they had lines, whether they were drenched in blood. Um, that third act of kids really, Whoa. really, really brought it. <laughs> Creepy to the T. Um, I just don't know if I would have had the courage as a kid to, to to play in a role like this, but like they were convincing. Um, they were they 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 were kids, shall I just say, kids mm -hmm. misfits. Um, and um, even like as I mentioned, even some of them dished out some blows. So you yeah. know, shout out to uh, the adults that were uh, fair fair players in that. So mm -hmm. equal you know, the deeper... opportunity, evil. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's what the name of this film should be called. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, as the deeper this film gets, the more unhinged of events, and it just gets wild, man. And there's some really good shots, cinematography, low lights, and all that. So overall, I just will end it by saying that this is a solid film. And if you still have an opportunity to see it in theaters, certainly go out the way and do so. But if not, it is available on Shutter right now. This is When Evil Lurks. Folks, get in the comments. Let us know your thoughts once you check this out. It is out, so you can talk your spoilers because there's a particular scene that I know is going to blow your mind. There's one pretty early. There's one somewhere between the first and second act transition, I should say. And there is certainly one around the second to third act that is just kind of just, I don't know, man. It's going to make you grip your dog a little bit closer. But <laughs> <laughs> until the next review, folks, y'all let us know y'all thoughts about this one. And we'll catch y'all back. For many more very soon thank you for watching so really quickly too really quickly like before we roll out um i know we say we're going to talk a little bit of spoilers but just like one particular scene i was just very impressed with so i definitely want to talk about it just a little bit more into detail and that was um at the barbed wire fence where uh we were aware that there was a um a goat within the herd of goats that probably didn't belong I love the chaos in this scene because when you know that there's a goat that, for lack of better words, is the black sheep of the crew, you start to wonder, well, which goat it is, is it? And they show you so many different goats and it's flashing by really, really quickly. So obviously your antennas are up because you're wanting to know what this goat is going to look like. Obviously it's something demonic. So you're like, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm interested on what the design of this goat's going to be. And then once they finally land you on this black goat uh like brown accents uh floppy ears it does look menacing and i love that the goat embrace the i'm gonna pull up on you mentality because when my man puts the shotgun to his head the goat walks up like so what's good bro <laughs> i love this scene truly this is one of my favorite scenes of all of cinema this year um but for you either it's this scene or was it anything else in this movie that you quickly wanted to detail on the spoiler toting the spoiler line a little bit of something that you just was so impressed with i'm gonna try to explain this to the best of my ability without completely ripping it up um, but motherly love goes a long way here, goes a long, long way. Um, that, but also, Hey, paired with, uh, practical effects, insane, absolutely insane. And there is a little bit of the art to, in horror with like less is more. Um, this movie does not, we, we don't, we don't do that here it's it's more is is even more than i asked for and maybe even more than my threshold can can handle <laughs> but um a one note i think it's great that you know we're talking about the whole like equal opportunity evil type thing and all of our performances are so solid and really deliver evil like through the performance how do they find a goat that can deliver this amount of evil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because that goat, that goat was not playing around. First, That's it kind of reminded wild, me. Man. <laughs> it's wild. First, it kind of remi reminded me of um, 
you know, I live in New York City. So, you know, honestly, sometimes I deal with mice. It's just the way of the world out here. Um, kind of reminds me of a situation when you got like a mouse in, in the house and then everyone starts panicking. Like, it's not much to panic about because it's only a mouse. It's fine. But it seems like the end of the world because it's in the kitchen. It's in your house. Ah, ah, ah. Um, and so the scene with the goat, you know, it's a goat. But the level of stress is like the world could end at the hooves <laughs> of this goat right now. Um, and as a viewer, you're like, it's a goat. Like, what's the goat going to do? Until this goat starts turning on the acting chops and pulls up <laughs> on the characters, like, what you going to do? And then immediately the stakes just rise. Yeah. Agreed. So... On that note, folks, you all let us know some of your favorite scenes and whatnot, but I definitely want to make sure we plug that one in before we wrap this up. Once again, when evil lurks in theaters, some places still, but definitely on Shutter right now. Check it out. Jump in the comments and we'll see y'all back for more very soon.